To demonstrate the speed and ease of use, we will now make a sample drawer using both lapped and through dovetails. Prepare the components to size as detailed in the manual, marking each part accordingly. Install the tail guides, spaced as per the dimensions in the manual. Note that the first guide is installed one notch to the right of the reference mark. Then record these positions. You may find it helpful to extend the marks to the rear of the jig as an aid to lining up the router with the tail guides. Select the correct cutter, the 7 degree by 19 millimeters, which is used to cut both the pins and the tails of a lap dovetail. The 19 mm cutter is selected because it's slightly shorter than the thickness of the drawer front. Depthing the cutter is a simple matter of ensuring that the full length of the cutter plus the thickness of a guide finger protrudes from the router base. Always cut a test joint and adjust fit if necessary by making fine adjustments to the cutter height, lowering if loose, and raising the cutter if too tight. First cut the tails. Insert the work face side away from you in the vertical clamp against the front channel. Before cutting, check that the timber is firmly up to the underside of all the guides and that the edge is pushed square up to the fence. Reduce breakout by placing an offcut here. Take a first cut across the width of the tailpiece from left to right. Keep the guide bush in contact with the front guide rail at all times. Without lifting the router, return to the left-hand side of the jig. Again, maintain contact with front guide rail. Work from left to right, routing between the forks. Reduce feed rate when breaking through the back of the sockets. Repeat the process for the front edge of the other drawer side. If you experience some breakout, in some timbers this is more likely than others, combat this by back cutting, that is routing from right to left. This operation requires a little more care but will improve the finish of the joint. Note how crisp the internal shoulder of the joint is. Replace the tail guides with the lapped pin guides. The pencil marks will ensure that the pins will be in exactly the correct position. No problem with setting up, straight away the offset is correct. For the pins, mount the timber in the horizontal clamp with the distance forward of the rear guide, set by the thickness of the side just cut, or use the lap pin stops. Again, route left to right taking gradual passes, removing a little more material each time. Check for fit with the side, then repeat for the other end of the front. For the through dovetails, normally used at the back of a drawer, use a straight cutter with the relevant pin guides to make the pins and a matching dovetail cutter with the tail guides to form the sockets or tail pieces. First, line up the tail guides. This will be in exactly the same positions as marked before. So just click to the pencil line from below. Clamp against the rear channel with the outside surface of the side facing away from you. Route the tails left to right, taking care not to route between the guides. Repeat the process for the back of the other side. Remove the tail guides, replacing them with the pin guides. Change the cutter to the straight cutter. Clamp against the rear channel with the outside surface of the back facing towards you. Ensure the timber is hard up to the undersides of the guide fingers and against the fence. Insert a breakout piece behind the work and route each section left to right, taking light passes. As you're about to break through, slow the feed rate. 
the completed cut will look like this, with the joint fitting together like this. Finally assemble all component parts with glue, inserting the base into place. But remember, this jig doesn't just make straightforward drawers. A wide range of additional joints are possible. End-to-end -end dovetails are a decorative method of joining boards together. Machine, as for lap dovetails, except both parts are clamped vertically against the rear channel. Use the tail guides to cut the tails, and the lapped pin guides to cut the pins. They can also be used as a quick way of determining the correct depth of cut for lap dovetails. Rebated drawer fronts can be lap dovetailed with no special setup. The drawer front is inserted in the same way as a normal front. But make sure that the main body of the drawer is against the side fence, not the edge. Ensure that the cutter does not contact the back face of the rebated front. Machine as for a normal lap dovetail. When cutting the tails on the drawer side, the same depth of cut will be used, asymmetrically or irregularly spaced dovetails. Should you use the jig to create boxes, the flexibility of the pin spacing will become apparent. It allows you to leave a wide tail that can subsequently be ripped through to create the lid of the box. When undertaking this procedure to cut the two opposite faces, the pin layout will have to be moved to the other end of the jig. The simplest way of achieving this is to rotate a cut section over to the other end of the jig and just duplicate the pin spacing. Replace the workpiece with the opposite member and route as normal. Not only are irregularly spaced dovetails used to create box lids, also the varied spacing allows a great amount of design creativity. Comb joints can be made with either regular or irregular spacing. Use the tail guides and lapped pin guides in conjunction with the 8.9mm straight cutter. Unlike most jigs, you do not have to offset one piece. Shadow dovetails with several configurations are also possible. They're constructed by moving the guide finger position to the left or the right to obtain a wider tail that is then later re-machined at the normal width. Start by cutting a light toned tail piece, first with all the tail guides set at one notch to the right, then one notch to the left. The cutter depth must be set to 2.5 millimeters deeper than the final mating part and the dark toned timber must also be 2.5 millimeters thicker than the final pin piece, a maximum of 15.9 millimeters. Cut the pins in the dark timber, glue up, and when dry, saw off the waste. The shadows can be on all three sides of the pin, or just one or two, depending on your design. The design potential when using the jig is as great as your imagination.